So guys, I know as much as there's going on on the vehicle production, there's just as much going on, if not more, on the software development side. The team is looking to strike a balance between the latest core projects, RoboTaxi, unsupervised full self-driving, but at the very same time, they're also pushing out newer features to the current builds that we have today. Earlier this month, Tesla rolled out a mobile app update version 4.44.5. This update, while references mainly to minor bug fixes in the changelog, it brings some new features and undocumented changes discovered while digging further into the codes. Initial changes included enhancements in supercharging, including a new banner that automatically appears when a nearby station is detected, Real-time charging costs are now displayed on both the vehicle's main screen and in the mobile app. Tesla has also added support for live activities in iOS, allowing you to view charging data directly from your iPhone's lock screen. And for users with devices featuring the dynamic island, charging percentage is now always visible up top during a charging session. As for the undocumented changes found in the latest codes, this points to the upcoming features linked to full self-driving package and Tesla's planned ride-sharing network. Smart Summon is finally expected to arrive in this update, adding the ability to summon your vehicle with or without holding the button continuously. While RoboTaxi functionality has also been fully baked into the app under a separate section called Project Alicorn, this update includes ride hailing requests such as confirming pickup location, entering destination, display real-time ETA, confirming pullover action, and ride cancellations. And then, just recently, within the week, Tesla rolled out a new update, a point release, giving us references to app-based key access and guest profiles in a separate section of code, new mentions of voice assistant and AI integration have appeared. Notably, Grok is now listed along with a new personality button, likely pointing to deeper vehicle integration in the next major update release. Now, like I said, this is all really fantastic stuff, and it's happening in the midst of the most important time for Tesla in their entire existence. I would have thought that they would have pulled all their engineering resources, all hands on deck for this event happening in just two weeks, and this would be the break it or make it moment. So I would assume that this was going to be a priority, but really good news aside from just that, that they are really working to give us the best experience possible. This is what makes owning a Tesla so wonderful, so amazing, and this is just the start of what you're going to see in the weeks to follow when everything starts to pull off. Now, what's even more crazy about this is that it doesn't end there. There is one more thing that Tesla has just pulled out. They are rolling out this new software update, this new feature here, perfect in time as summer is just around the corner. In the latest vehicle software update version 2025.14.12, this build brings numerous features including dash cam update, adaptive headlight, and autopilot comfort settings. It also brings along some convenience feature, especially useful during the summer camping months. A few items to highlight include the memory setting for the trunk based on location, Wi-Fi hotspot always connecting automatically, and keeping accessory power always on. But then, the most exciting one, the one considered to be an important safety feature, was released just last minute, giving the car the ability to detect if a child is left back unknowingly. The rollout of this feature, referred to as Child Left Alone Detection, coincides with Tesla's RoboTaxi launch and ride-hailing service to arrive later next month, ensuring that everyone inside is safe and especially younger passengers. This safety feature is one of the most important during the next few months, especially important and highly requested by families and parents, notifying the owners that there is still a child, there is still an animal, there is still anyone inside of the car. This feature is initially only available to new Model 3s built from mid-2023 and onwards and is soon to expect to arrive in other vehicles equipped with the in-cabin radar. This includes all the new Model Ys, the Cybertruck, the Model S, Model X built from mid-2021 and later. But on a side note, although this feature has officially rolled out to customer vehicles, Tesla has re-clarified in the hours after that this is only available in the European market but will eventually roll out to other regions and other markets as well, hopefully right before the summer months start and before the sun starts beating down. All right, so there we have it. Although I am extremely pumped for the RoboTaxi launch in the next few weeks, there is just that same excitement every time a new software update rolls out to our cars that is not just a minor bug fix, 
This is what makes owning a Tesla so exciting. Every time you wake up, you open the app or you pull down a notification and you see that there is one pending, that is something to really look forward to. And sometimes you really just wanna hit that button even before you take off in the morning. Now specifically about this new feature, the in-cabin child left alone feature, this is gonna be using the in-cabin radar and this is gonna be something extremely cool. It's going to be a radar system that is mounted in the top portion of your headliner and it's gonna be able to see through literally everything. It's going to be able to bounce off walls. The waves are going to see exactly what is underneath the ground, what is on the seat, if there is a child seat there. It's going to even be able to see, if I can recall correctly, your heartbeat and be able to contact emergency services if it detects a heart attack or a stroke coming up. That is something that we're really waiting to see. But these are one of the little things that Tesla is able to do that no other manufacturer is even thinking of. Now, what's even more interesting about this radar system is that somehow if your car was originally expected to support this, but it was missing, you could check this inside of service mode. If you don't see the radar there, contact your service center. There is a chance they can retrofit this in for you or add it in if your car was supposed to come with it. I believe that there were some early batches of models rolling off of the line that didn't have it installed originally and they are going to do it completely free. So this is something you guys should check out and if you want to know more about it, know more about the details, go check out my previous video. I did run through that including the 5G modem which was absent on some of the older vehicles but eventually got added back on. This is something I would drop in the description below and up top there. Go check that out before you guys head off of this video. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed all of this. I will be keeping a close eye on everything that comes up in the next few days. So make sure you guys stick around. Hit that subscribe button, that bell notification if you haven't done so already. And follow me on X at HeyJohnE. Over there, you will see things you wouldn't see over here. And then you can chat with me anytime. I'll respond as quickly as possible. This should be it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. This is John once again. Peace out.